Hey everyone, we are back with another short tutorial, this time on producing takeoff values from composite structures. Now, I love working with composite structures because they give us so much ability to be able to run reports based off the different layers that make up a uh, either a wall or a slab or a roof or a shell. Um, so it's just a really powerful feature of ARCHICAD because we're actually just listing real building materials here to, to make up these assemblies. And we have a lot of ability within ARCHICAD to list those materials independently um, on different reports if we so choose to do so. So in this tutorial, I've set up just a single wall and a slab. Obviously, they're both composite structures. And I just want to kind of walk through uh, two different methods for producing reports. Um, similarly to what we did with our complex profiles. And what I've set up here is just a simple uh, elemental based report and a component based report. And we'll go through and kind of play with some of the takeoffs and talk about how we can really dial these in for our purposes. So, all right, let's go to our 2D floor plan here. And let's simply just start by uh, looking at our wall. So um, once again, we will do a selection here in 2D and we will right click over here on our list floor plan selection only. And so this way we're just taking that single element and showing it onto our specific report that we have set up. So, okay. We can see here we have a length of 10 feet. Um, we have a surface area of 100, so that means our wall is probably uh, 10 feet tall. And we have a projected area of 13.75 as our area. So if we take a look at that back here in 2D and we just simply kind of click around, we can see that our area there is 13.75. And so that is just the projection of the wall. Um, let's do a similar takeoff with our slabs here. So we'll grab that single slab. We can see our surface area is exactly the same for both scenarios. There is no 3D length relating to a slab. So, okay, so that's elemental based reporting, which is noted in this schedule grouping here. But let's see the same thing now in our component based report. So we'll list the floor plan selection only. And okay, so this looks very similar here, but one thing that you may notice is we actually have um, a much, well, let's see, our surface area here is 600. Now, why is that? Well, um, it's because we have different components listed here. Our three length is 60 feet when we know it was just 10 feet. So what's going on here? We can see we have a quantity of six. Let's uncheck our merge uniform items. And it looks like now we have six different walls that are producing exactly the same takeoff. Well, this doesn't really do us much good because we can't really tell what these items are. So let's actually go into our scheme settings and with a component based report, we can actually go in and add individual fields for our building materials. And so um, this is a great time to list an ID and a name. And so with these two, we can pull this up here to the top. Um, we can now start adding these to our schedule and we can start seeing what these different components mean. So I'm actually going to turn off our element ID and our layer. We don't really need those. And let's just look specifically at our building materials. So we have masonry, non-structural, structural, airspace, insulation. We have all these different components that are being listed from our single wall, which is awesome. So that makes these values here start to make a lot more sense. And same with our surface area takeoffs. And right now we can see our projected and our surface area is exactly the same. So. Um, we can add a little bit more detail here. Um, we can go in and we can actually list in our components, we can actually list our skin thickness, which would probably be a very nice one to have, as well as our volume. So we can start pulling through some additional values here um, that will really just kind of help us uh, understand what the dimensions are of these individual layers. So we can see that we have these takeoff values here. And um, yeah, we can actually get an idea of what 
the breakdown is. So if we change our takeoff method here by going into our view settings and we just set this back to say like a, oh, I don't know, like a, a floor plan. I think that will set us back to feet and inches. So no, that's still on our regular, but that's okay. Um, so now we can see that we are getting these individual components. And so if we went back and uh, tried to list the same thing back on our elemental base report, um, we can list our floor plan. Um, but when we try to actually add in, say, those building materials to break this out again, it's not necessarily going to work the same way. We can actually go to our building materials and we can try listing all of them. And what this will do is it's just going to list them all in a single value here or a single listing. And if we wrap the text, we can see that there's all the building materials, but we can't break them out in this type of report. So elemental based reports, keep them all together into one line item. Um, what's nice though, is this is giving us a, a nice clean surface area. Um, but what uh, it's not allowing us to do is to break out the individual components. So um, once again, let's go back, list this onto our component based report. And here, once again, we can see all of our different takeoff values here. So next step here is let's add a little bit of complexity to this by actually just taking this and we'll just bend it. And let's see what that does to our takeoff values because now our drywall should be longer. Our brick um, is certainly shorter in comparison. So let's go back and see how that impacts our takeoffs. So we'll list that on the floor plan. And okay, so now our lengths, well, our reference length here is all still the same. Our surface area is all being shown as 99 now instead of 100, so that actually went down. But our component com uh, skin area projection has definitely gone up here for, say, our gypsum board. And it's compared to our masonry non structural. We can see that there's almost, you know, 13 square feet. Of difference between those two and so now we can really tell that this is um, giving us a much better takeoff value for these individual components which is which is awesome so we can really break those down and get a uh, much more detailed level out of those individual elements there so if we wanted to we could even start throwing in some additional criteria here to really start limiting down what we see on our report so if we throw in a criteria of a building material say just for our masonry structural um, then when we go back here we can just isolate just that single uh, projected component skin area and get a nice takeoff value which is almost you know 10 feet more than our surface area based off the, the old method. So um, this is some pretty powerful stuff, um, allows us to really go in and when we're using these different uh, composite structures, allows us to really isolate and pull out individual building materials um, that we wanna list. So once again, we can just continue to build on this. We can add in our non-structural, um, we can do an or here and list both of those. So. Um, or if we want to bring back everything, we just remove those and we can bring back everything that's part of that assembly. So similarly, we can do the exact same thing with our slabs. Um, we can actually list them both at the same time. So there's all of our components of our slab with our projected skin area and our different thicknesses. And then same thing with our wall. So when we start bringing these together, so let's take this into 3D here and say we want to set our wall maybe like this then we can see this will actually start going through and based on the priorities of these elements it'll start kind of breaking down and cutting our different uh, model layers there so um, if we isolate, we can see that we're just trimming off a little bit of that uh, metal framing with the drywall. Let's go back to here. Let's look at this one. And we can see that we're really starting to peel away the different layers there 
um, of our slab. So looks like our length here was not fully there. I wonder why that was. Can we get that to clean up? We should be able to. Yeah, I think there's just a slight little hair there. Um, okay, so we go back now to our component skin areas. We list these. And based off these priorities, it should really start breaking things up. So here we can see um, with our slab, we have our concrete structural, which is the full um, projected area. We have our stone gravel, but we can see here we're starting to remove our flooring, our OSB and our pressure treated is the same. Um, same thing here with our wall. So we're pulling, we're reducing our non-structural and gypsum board based off those intersections. So um, that's pretty awesome. And this is just, you know, kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of Archicad's power with these different uh, priority intersections. And um, yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, fun to play around with these and get these set up and to, you know, check out where the priorities lie. And so that way we can really start going in and, uh, you know, dialing in our quantity takeoffs. So, okay, um, so that's a quick little tutorial on how to produce takeoffs with our component um, or sorry, our composite structures. Um, if we want to simply just have more of a basic takeoff, then um, we can certainly use still our elemental base report, which is going to just keep this much more simplified based off the, uh, the overall projections um, for surface areas. And if we want to break things down into different layers, then that's, again, a perfect opportunity to use our component base report and we can determine different projected skin areas automatically based off those priorities. So, okay, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, leave it in the comment section and I will catch you on another video here soon.